path. Red paths don't come quickly. They come through experience. When you stop seeking wisdom is when you begin to get a little wiser. My definition of autism is someone who has difficulty communicating or expressing their emotions or opinions properly, I guess. I don't know a scientific one, but I guess it's a, a social uh, development disorder that kind of um, results in the person who's affected not having uh, the same level of social engagement with others and their surroundings that people normally do. I mean, I think that when someone gets labeled something, then it becomes a bad thing. I think that everybody has maybe slight variations of things that may be considered autism. You know, if you're talking about, you know, people who compulsively wash their hands or people who do certain things a certain way and, you know, you know, some people may say, oh, that person's anal or they're, you know, they're so particular or they're like, don't, you know, but that could be autism if, you, you know, who knows? I don't think it's, I mean, either good or bad. I mean, I think it's something definitely like our society needs to address and we need to like, you know, help these people adapt and find you know, ways, especially ways for them to accept in our society. I mean, it's only very recently that these people haven't been completely ostracized. So, I mean, we have a long, we've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go. I definitely don't think um, it's a good or a bad thing. I think that's a, I kind of reject the premise of the question. <laughs> okay. What I think of autism, I think of people who don't like to be touched. They have a hard time dealing with others and being in an environment where they have to interact with a lot of people. Um, and they can function with other people, but they, they require a little bit more, like a more mellow and kind of quieter environment in order to function well, because you know, the chaos of the day-to-day -day life is just a little too much. When you were born, we knew you were different because you had your head up right away, you stared, you had this big wide-eyed open look, and you were really stiff, and you cried all the time. You really didn't make eye contact. Um, you never wanted to snuggle with anyone. And you didn't ever snuggle, that's true. The only time you sat still was when you were an infant was to nurse. And if you fell asleep and sleeping was tough for you. So we knew, we sort of, I, I really did know something was different about you. And I remember when people came to the hospital, they were commenting on, remember, that you were like this. It was like, wow, he's ready to get going. I was first diagnosed with autism when I was nine. A form of autism called Asperger's syndrome which is basically just, you know, a degree of autism. And I was really hesitant at first to, to label myself as that, even though my parents had gotten me diagnosed and I really had no say about it. So I fought against being called uh, someone with Asperger's syndrome or someone who's autistic because it at least initially felt shameful to me. I realized some autism is more extreme than yours, so for example, with my cousin's son, but I mean, I, I don't really know what the cause is. I just think it's just people. Do you? I think it's genetic. And genetic and... It seems to run in families to some extent, so I assume it must be genetic. Well, genetics is a very, very big factor in autism. And the core problems in autism are source, lack of social communication, you know, repetitive fixated interests. And a lot of people on the spectrum that are successful, you take those fixated interests and you broaden them out into a career. You know, if a kid likes trains, let's uh, read books about trains, do math with trains. There are autistic people who can't speak, yet when you read their writings online, when you read their writings on my website, they really have profound communications that are incredibly intelligent. So saying that someone is low functioning, I think is a misnomer. I think that the term low functioning is, is misleading because what are these people low functioning at? There's executive functioning, there's communication. There's all these different levels of autism that people don't really think about. When they think of autism, they think of these kids who, who just, you know, have their hands on their ears and are screaming and, and sitting in a corner. And that's really inaccurate. Well, there are some people that are nonverbal. They can learn to type and find out that there's normal intelligence in there. There's others where that's not going to be the case. 
you know, they got severe epilepsy and all kinds of other neurological problems. But in terms of this, you know, what's the way scientists are looking at it now and the way, you know, the way things are being proposed for the DMS-5, uh, that autism is a continuum. And the core deficits in autism are uh, lack of social communication and uh, repetitive interests of fixations and, that, and how severe that is is going to vary. I don't think anyone realizes how much I struggle on a day-to-day -day basis just with normal social situations, how much it drains my, my uh, energy. Just trying to act normal, you know, with a group of friends I've known for quite a while who even would accept, you know, me being different. It's incredibly difficult for me to do that. It takes great expenditure of mental energy. It was pretty hard. People had, kids had a hard time with you. You had a lot of struggles. You were picked on a lot, I think. Um, and I think the teachers didn't understand. And sadly, um, the teachers at your elementary school reacted sometimes in ways that were, were really hurt, hurt, uh, hurtful, right? Yeah. I mean, the principal once, when kids were picking on you at recess, the principal had you come sit down in her room with about eight other kids and everybody got to say what they didn't like about you and what was annoying them. And I thought that was probably the beginning of my thoughts that you needed to be out of that school. If there were more understanding, I might not have to work as hard because people would realize that it's not me trying to be unpleasant. It's, it's something that, it's the way that my brain operates. Autism is not a bad thing or a good thing. It's just a difference. And I think that once society starts seeing it that way, we're going to be in a better place.